So what happens now? Will lawmakers at the state or federal level adopt new legislation to address gun violence? What's on the table? And is compromise possible in these divided times? Jason Doyle joins us with more on the political debate in Washington and here in Oklahoma. Jason? Rich, this week featured negotiations between Republicans and Democrats in the U.S. Senate, while the U.S. House passed a package of gun restrictions. Closer to home, lawmakers say change is needed, but disagree on what that should be. Wanting reform does not mean I want your guns. As the country and Oklahoma continue to deal with the fallout from the recent spate of deadly mass shootings, Democrat Representative Monroe Nichols believes some common ground can be found. And I hope that there's some uh, some will to act, not because this is just a politically um, popular uh, issue right now, um, but because if we look up and down at the data in Oklahoma, uh, you know, Tulsa, it's this, this not the first time something like this has happened in Oklahoma. Right now, two people die every day from gun deaths in Oklahoma. He says Oklahoma lawmakers could take steps to make things safer no, without congressional action, like repealing the state's ban on red flag laws. Oklahoma is the only state with such a law. A lot of people talk about this being a mental health issue. Repealing those anti-red flag laws will certainly help us provide services for folks who desperately need it. Nichols contends limiting where guns can be carried would help too. Also repeal the uh, concealed carry in zoos and public parks. I think public parks and zoos, there's a lot of kids, a lot of families should be safe spaces and, and gun-free zones. Not everyone agrees that gun-free zones are safe. So these ineffective policies that we should start taking a look at are policies like gun-free zones. Republican Representative Jay Stiegel has a unique perspective to gun laws because he's a licensed dealer. You know, it, inhibiting the, the ability of an individual to exercise their natural right to self-defense paints a soft target for those that wish to do harm to others. So we definitely need to be taking a look at those places where currently members of the public are prohibited from carrying and seeing if those policies are actually working or if we need to adjust the law to allow them to defend themselves in those situations. Stiegel says state lawmakers should find a way to make schools a harder target. We need to take a look at, uh, for example, the, the availability of resource officers or security guards, or uh, it's even been suggested that maybe we reach out to the veteran community and see if there's some retirees that would like to come down and volunteer some time, just pull some security and and uh, help keep folks safe in, in our school campuses. Some say the conversation should be more focused on the criminal. Why are we going after the legal abiding law abiding citizens on their gun rights when it, and not putting it at the feet of the people who are actually the problem and that is the shooter. Republican Representative Justin Humphrey says the root of the problem is not a weapon, but mental health. If you want to talk about mental health, everybody says, well, everybody talks about that, but they never do anything. Then fine, let's do something because we do have a mental health crisis across the nation, especially here in Oklahoma. In Washington, D.C., the House of Representatives held hearings and passed H.R. 7910, the Protecting Our Kids Act, which limits gun sales to people 21 and older, sets up regulation of ghost guns, increases the requirements for gun storage in a residence, and would prohibit the sale of most large capacity magazines. Not everyone was on board. Comes with a 15 round magazine. Here's a seven round magazine, which would be less than what would be lawful under this bill if this bill were to come off. It doesn't fit. So this gun would be banned. I hope the, under gun, the gun is not bill. loaded. I'm at my house. I can do whatever I want with my guns. The day the U.S. House passed H.R. 7910, they also heard from parents and victims of gun violence, including the recent Buffalo and Uvalde mass shootings. To the lawmakers who feel that we do not need stricter gun laws, let me paint a picture for you. My son, Zaire, has a hole in the right side of his neck, two on his back, and another on his left leg. I claim that nothing in these bills do anything to make us safer or address the mental health crisis in this country. Despite living with the heartache of losing my son on a daily basis, I believe it is our God-given right to defend ourselves from any act of violence. Somewhere out there, there is a mom listening to our testimony, thinking I can't even imagine their pain, not knowing that our reality will one day be hers. 
It isn't likely that the House's legislation will pass the Senate, but bipartisan negotiations on possible gun reforms are underway among a group of Republican and Democrat senators. I'm not in that group, so I don't know all of the conversations that are happening. Uh, there are some of the members that are trying to be able to keep everyone informed as they go through the process, but they're doing their work to be able to have that ongoing dialogue. Lankford believes talks across the aisle are happening in earnest. So they're trying to talk about what would actually matter uh, to be able to make a difference long term on this, to still protect Second Amendment rights of every individual, but to be able to also work to be able to protect the lives of people that have mental health issues or that can't legally own a firearm. While the path forward in Congress or in the Oklahoma legislature is unclear, one thing is both sides are talking over the issue of gun violence. The discussions are happening. And I'll tell you this, members from the other side of the aisle have called me and said, the most important question, asked the most important question they've asked, what can we do? And that's a very valid question. While Congress could come up with a compromise at any time, it will be next year's legislative session before state lawmakers can consider proposals.